Hi, this is Mike from IT Supplies, and I'm here with a tutorial today on how to uninstall and then reinstall your Wasatch software. And the first step is to download or locate your correct installation file. Now, if you're not able to find the original installation file on your PC, you can navigate onto wasatch.com slash download and re-download the version that you were running before. And so if you were on 7.8, you can see that's the latest version or if you were on 7.6, 7.5, you want to match what you had on your original download. Uh, that is because your registration codes are dedicated to the version that you were on before. Once that's downloaded, the second step is to back up your registration codes, your configurations, and your print and rip queues, if so desired. If your version of Wasatch is not running, uh, you should have gotten registration codes emailed to the primary email you provided when you initially installed Wasatch. Your registration codes can be re-sent to you if you re-register once you install the new version. We'll get to that in a little bit. But for those who are still able to open their old version of Wasatch, to access your registration codes, all you have to do is go into Help and then Enter Registration Codes, and they'll be entered in on the menu there. That menu looks a little bit like this, and if you look at the actual code listed here, SoftRip 760, you can see that they were on version 7.6 in this screenshot. Now once you back up your registration codes, you want to back up your imaging configurations and possibly your print and rip queues if you do access those and reuse them from time to time. As you can see on here, I've navigated to my www.rip folder, which is installed in, on my E drive. A lot of times that'll be on your C drive. And what you want to back up on here is the configurations folder, as you can see highlighted right here. You see I've already copied that onto my desktop. And then if you want to, you can also take your rip queues and your print queues. Uh, you can see I have eight of them here. If you only have one unit set up on your Wasatch, so you see unit one, if you only have one unit set up, you only need to copy the first folder of both. Once you have all those backed up, you can go and close Wasatch. And then we're going to begin uninstalling through Windows. To access this, you can type in on your search below, uninstall or add or remove programs. You see here I have Wasatch Software version 7.8. When you click on that, you can click uninstall. So you wanna just follow the on-screen prompts, make sure your software is closed, and then go ahead and click uninstall. It's gonna ask if you're if you want to remove this, just hit yes. Okay, and as you can see, the uninstall is complete. If you, any shortcuts exist, delete them by hand. I do recommend this. So as you can see, I still have my shortcut on the desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And now you wanna make sure your Wasatch dongle is installed in your PC. And go ahead and run your newly downloaded or found copy of the installation.exe. The first thing you'll see is this window right here. It's just asking you where the temporary files can go. The temporary files are still on your PC despite you uh, uninstalling Wasatch beforehand. So when you click install, what you'll see is it's going to ask if you want to replace the files. If this is a fresh download that you just got off of Wasatch's website, you do want to select yes to all. If this is a download that you already had on your PC from before, the files have not changed and you can go ahead and hit no to all. But just to be safe, I'm gonna hit yes to all. So once that's done, what you'll see is this end user agreement. You wanna just go ahead and read that and then accept. It's gonna ask you what language you wanna select. And then this is what you'll see. What you want to look for is your dongle driver installed option to be grayed out. If it is not, you want to select to install the dongle driver, and then you want to run install software. Select your language. In general, Wasatch will recommend the drive with the most space left over. As you can see, I have the most space on my E drive. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And this is the menu you'll see afterwards. This is the Wasatch registration. If you 
downloaded a newer version of Wasatch than you were originally running. So if you were on 7.4, but you were unable to download that, you, you downloaded 7.8, this is where you would want to refill out this information. You will then be emailed new codes and you can access the newer version of software. Since I already have my codes backed up, I'm going to just click enter codes manually. And this is the screen you'll see afterwards. This is where you want to paste your codes in. And once you paste your codes and hit OK, you'll see the installation. OK, and once that's all set, you'll see setup was completed successfully. Let's hit OK. And so before we open Wasatch again, we want to make sure we copy over our configurations and our print and rip queues. So now I'm back on my, my new installation with the wwrip78 folder. So what you want to do here, you want to copy your configurations folder, drag it into the entire folder, and let it just copy over. And if you're doing this with the print and rip queues, you can do the same thing. Once that's complete, when you open your configurations folder, you can see it's back to the way it was before. So now that that's done, we're ready to open Wasatch again. So this is the screen you'll see when you first open up Wasatch. From here, what you want to do, where it says Wasatch Internet Deployment, you want to select your printer model. So in this case, I'm going to choose the Epson SureColor F6200. Next, you want to select your imaging configuration you were using before. In this case, I'm going to select the Chromalux Gloss White. If you are on a newer version of Wasatch, like 7.8, you can also download configurations. The last step is to choose a physical connection. If you have your printer connected with a USB cable, just select Scan USB. If it is on your network, you want to go and open TCP slash IP list. From here, just match the IP address that is on your printer, click Add, and then Save List. The last step is just to make sure all of your printer settings are correct. Paper width, if you're using a dye sublimation machine, make sure you have mirror selected and then if you want to add any additional crop marks or anything like that. Once you're all set, go ahead and hit OK. If you did decide to copy over your print and rip queues, you can verify that those are populated in the queues tab. And that's all there is to it. At this point, you're ready to print. Thank you for watching. This has been Mike with IT Supplies. Thanks so much for watching this. If you would like to see more of these videos, please go to our YouTube channel.